Today I'm going to be showing you how to blend between two Cinemachine cameras. So in this one, I'm just moving around with my overworld camera. And then when I press the spacebar button, then I'm going to switch to another virtual camera, which is following this NPC. And then when I press space, you'll see that it will quickly go back to the overworld. And you see that the transition between the overworld and the NPC cameras are different. When going from the overworld to the NPC camera, it's smoother, but when I go to the overworld camera, it's faster. And I'll show you how to adjust those settings. All right, so the first thing that you wanna do is of course have Cinemachine installed, so go to Window Package Manager, and make sure you have Cinemachine installed, and I'll also be using the new input system for the button press. And you can just put update or install for both of them. All right, and so you wanna make sure to have at least two virtual cameras so that you can switch or blend between them. And you can add them by going to Cinemachine and create virtual camera or whichever one of these that you'd like. So in my case, which I'm basing this one off of the pan and zoom tutorial, I have a Cinemachine virtual camera and I'm manually changing the position so I could zoom in and pan around. And for the NPC, I'm just following that NPC, which is actually an enemy apparently. And it's just using a composer aim. All right, so when you add in a virtual camera, when you go to your main camera, you'll see that there is a Cinemachine brain. And this is where we want to go, custom blends. So there's the default blend, which is ease in and out, which is smoother. You can also choose hard in and hard out, or you can create a custom blend. So let's go to our custom blend. Let's create a new asset. And I'm just going to drop it in one of my Cinemachine folders. I'm going to call it Cinemachine Blend Tutorial. All right, so once you save that into your folder and you click that asset, you'll see that in the inspector, you can now pick the blend settings from a camera and to another camera. So if we click this plus button here and we select the drop down from, you'll see that our Cinemachine cameras in our world appear here. So in this case, I'm going to select Overworld. So this is from the Overworld camera and we want to blend to the NPC camera. And here you can pick the style. So if you want to ease in, you can pick that. Or if you want hard in, you can also pick that. You can change those values and see which ones you like best. And if you'd like more information on the blend styles, I'm going to link this in the description. It has a description of all the types of blends here. All right, you can also under style, click custom, and you can make your own curve. So this is linear. This one's more curved. So I'll just select that. And time is how much time it takes to get from the first camera, which is the overworld one, to the NPC camera. And so we want to have one from the NPC to the overworld. So when we switch back, so I'm just going to select hard out, which is accelerate out of the outgoing virtual camera, which is the one we're blending out of and ease into the incoming one, which is the overworld one. All right. And in your main camera, once you have that all set up, you'll see that now it has the Sin Machine blend tutorial. If it's not there, you can just click that button and find it in your assets. All right, so now that we have the blending mode, we actually need to switch between them. So there's two ways we can do this. We can do this either through the Cinemachine state-driven camera, or we can do it through code, changing the priority of each of the Cinemachine cameras, which you can see if you click a virtual camera, you'll see that it'll have a priority. And the one with the highest priority is the main one. So let's do it with the state-driven camera. So go to Cinemachine and create a new state-driven camera. And I'm going to delete the camera that it added under it. And for the state driven camera that I've renamed here, you'll see that we have some states here and some virtual camera children. So the virtual camera children are the cameras that we want to change between. So we're going to have to add in our two cameras and we can actually do that by selecting both of our cameras, which I've just clicked the first one, press shift and click the second one. And you can drag them under the state driven camera. And now once you click state driven camera, you'll see that it'll pop up as the children. And you can see that the one with the highest priority is going to be the main one, which in our case is the overworld, which I've set to one right here in the priority. All right. So now that we have our children, we can define the states for our state machine. So the state machine is just a bunch of states, which is the current data. And then you can just switch between the state depending on a certain condition. So let's add in a new state here and you see that we actually can't define anything here it says default and that's because this depends on an animated target so we have to create an animator which defines our states so that we can switch between them so in one of your folders i just have it in the scripts folder here i'm going to right click and create a new animator controller i'm just going to call that cinemachine animator all right and then here i can just right click and create a new state right there and i'm also going to right click and create another state so this is for each of our cameras, I'm going to have a state. 
so that I can switch between those states. All right, and for the new state, which I've clicked, I'm just gonna call that the overworld camera. And for the second state, which is called the new state zero, I'm just gonna call that the NPC camera. All right, so now we have our animator and we need to attach that to one of our game objects. So let's just add in an animator into this game object and you can drag in the animator controller into the controller field. And then you can just drag that animator into the animated target on the Sin Machine state driven camera. All right, and so now when we click state, we'll have our two states there. So let's select our overworld camera and let's associate that with our overworld camera. So this is the animator state and this is the camera that is related to that animator state. So whenever we switch to this animator state, Cinemachine will automatically switch to that camera. And so let's add another one for our NPC camera and for NPC. So the wait parameter here is for how long to wait before the camera switches over to the camera for that state. And minimum is the minimum length of time to keep the camera active. So this is to prevent the camera from being switched very often. So maybe you want to wait two seconds before switching again or letting the player switch the camera again. All right, so now that that's done, we actually have to trigger this. So we can write a script for that. So let's right click and create a new script and call that Sin Machine Switcher or whatever you want to call it. And I'm going to use the new input system for this. I'm going to erase these two using statements as well as these comments. And I'm going to add in the using unity engine dot input system. All right. And so right here, let's create a new input action. So I'm going to create a serialized field and then say private input action action. All right. And then we have to get a component for our animator. So we have to say private animator animator. And then in an awake function, we can just say animator equals get component animator so that we can switch the states. We also want to make sure to enable and disable our input when the script is enabled and disabled. So create an on disable and on enable function. And we can just say action dot enable when our script is enabled and action dot disable when our script is disabled. And so for our input action, we're just going to be doing a button. So let's go to our state driven camera and add in this new script Cinemachine switcher. And you can see we can add in an action here. So let's just add in a normal binding and you can double click that and you can add in a path. So I'm going to press listen and press space bar and you can add in an interaction and processor there. If you're interested in learning more about the input system, I have a couple tutorials that I'll link down in the description. All right, so now that we have a keyboard there, in our start function, we can say action.perform. So whenever we perform this action, this is an event that we're subscribing to, we don't want any parameters to be passed in. So we'll just use an underscore. So this is subscribing to that event. This is the parameter that's gonna be passed in. If you want to pass in the parameter for some reason, you can just put a variable name there. And then we can just say switch state, which is the function we're going to be calling. So let's do a private void switch state. But in our case, we don't really need a context, so we can just put an underscore there. And so in this case, we only have two cameras to switch between, so we can just keep track of which one we're currently on with a boolean. So we can just say private bool overworld camera. And I'm just going to set that to true because we're going to be in the overworld camera because the priority at the start of the overworld camera is higher. So then in our switch state function, we can say, I'm going to zoom in a little here. If overworld camera, then we want to switch to the NPC camera. So we can say animator.play and we can just pass in the name of our animation, which you can go into your overworld camera. And in our case, it's called NPC camera and make sure the name matches npc camera else animator.play overworld camera which is the other one and now we want to make sure to switch the boolean so we can say overworld camera equals not overworld camera because once we switch it from the overworld camera it's going to be false so we have to set that to false and vice versa and we can just erase this update function here all right and so now when we press play you can see that i'm panning and when i press the space bar you'll see that it'll switch to the other camera, which I've actually changed to this player here, and it will follow my player around. And then I can press spacebar and it'll go back out to the overworld camera. You can see that now I'm panning back. And so now I'm gonna show you how to do this without the animator or the state machine camera, which is very simple and kind of the same. So we can do private void switch priority. 
So here we're just switching the priority of the cameras instead of changing the animation state. And we can do if overworld camera. So if the current one is the overworld camera, then we need to change the priority of the other camera. And then we can do here else something else happened. And let's just copy the overworld camera equals not overworld camera. So to change the priority, we need to get a reference to the Cinemachine cameras. So we can do that here in the Cinemachine switcher. We can say using Cinemachine, and then here we can do a serialized field, private, and do Cinemachine virtual camera, vcam, or you can just name it overworld camera. And we can say private Cinemachine virtual camera. We can call it vcam1. And we can just copy both of them and call this one vcam2. So we can just say this one is the overworld and this one is the npc slash player camera. So in our switch priority function, we can say vcam1 dot priority equals, and I'm just going to be using zeros and ones. So right now, if we're in our overworld camera, then that camera has a priority of one. So we want to make that priority zero and we want to make the other priority a higher number. So I'm just going to make that one. Else, if we're currently in our NPC camera or player camera, then we can say vcam1 priority equals 1, so it'll be the main camera now. And the other one, vcam2 dot priority equals 0. And then in our start function here, instead of calling switch state, we can just call switch priority. Alright, and now in the hierarchy, let's just drag our two virtual cameras out from the state driven camera and let's deactivate that. Then let's create a new empty game object, call that Cinemachine Manager. And I'm going to attach our Cinemachine Switcher. And since I'm making a new game object actually, then let's uncomment this get component animator since we won't have an animator in this game object. And let's just drag in our overworld camera into vcam1 and our NPC camera into vcam2. We also have to add in a binding since I deleted the other one. So same process as before, I'm going to add in the spacebar. All right, and when we click play, you can see I can pan around. And when I press spacebar, you'll see that we'll zoom into our character. And when I press spacebar, it'll zoom back out. And you can play around with these blending values. So let's say for our hard out, I just want it to be 0.5 seconds. And for our zooming in, I just want it to be 4 seconds so it can take longer. So I can zoom in and now you can see it's really slow. But when I zoom out, it's really fast. Alright, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I want to thank my patrons for all their support. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. It really goes a long way to helping me make these videos. And I'd like to thank a new patron under the enthusiastic tier, Fernando. Thank you so much for your support. I really appreciate it. And if you're interested, the link for my Patreon is in the description. I offer source code, early access, and an exclusive Discord channel. And if you haven't already, be sure to join our Discord channel so that you can chat or just post memes, or if you have any questions, you can ask there. So thanks so much, and see you next time.